Hello and welcome to Whiteboard Testing. Uh, I'm going to start today's video just by saying thank you to everyone who's been sharing and tweeting and posting messages on LinkedIn about Whiteboard Testing. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, and a big thanks to Lim as well, who did the first um, guest post, I guess, on uh, Whiteboard Testing, or the video that doesn't involve me. Um, so thanks for that. And as I said in the first video about what Whiteboard Testing is, you know, this is open to anyone. If you have access to a whiteboard or a flip chart and you want to record a video about something, please do send it to us and we'll upload it. Uh, you know, the more content we can get on YouTube, hopefully the more we can improve our community. Um, so today's video is about integration testing. Um, James Back wrote a blog post um, about a week ago now, I think, uh, where he, was, um, he showed us how he was coaching someone online and the theme they were talking about was integration testing. Uh, a fantastic blog post as well if you're interested in coaching and mentoring. Uh, James really breaks down his technique and his approaches, which is uh, a great read. Um, but the student wanted to know about integration testing. And throughout the conversation, James started to question his own understanding of integration testing. And then at the end of the post, which I'll link at the bottom of the video, uh, he reached out to the community to say, what are your views? What are your views on integration testing? Um, so I thought, great reason for a video. So, my views. We normally have, we normally think of two objects when we're talking about integrating. Um, so, you know, for this sake of this video, we're just going to be A and B. This could be a piece of code, this could be a class, this could be a class, it could be an API, this could be a website, it could be two websites, it could be anything. Um, and when we normally think about integration testing, we're normally thinking about how do these two things communicate? How does A communicate with B? And that's where I started when I was trying to think of this. Um, but then I thought that's not really necessarily the case. Like, is that now too simplified? So instead of talking about connection, I thought these two items have a relationship. Um, they don't have to be connected in any way at all, really. They just have to have a relationship. Um, so I started thinking like, so let's just say these have a relationship. In this instance, it might be uh, a communication relationship. So A likes to talk. So A, A talks, and A likes to uh, talk in ABC. Uh, that's how it likes to talk. And B also likes to talk. B likes to talk in X, Y, and Z. Um, but both of them like to listen. So A likes to listen. So it has an A and it's listening for some stuff. And B also likes to listen. So a lot of people, when they think about the integration testing that they're doing, they're normally talking about how A says something that B may consume. And that's really basic level. Now, you normally will design code in such a way that they can understand each other. They, they, you know, you, if, if A is talking in ABC, we'll write something on B that means it can understand ABC. Now, when we come to think of these tests, and we call them integration tests, in theory, we don't need B at all. Um, James mentioned this in some of the comments that he was replying to other people in. We don't even need B to do those types of tests. We can ignore B altogether. We could mock B. We could stub B. Um, you know, they're not really testing that these two things are, uh, are talking to each other in that sense. We're just testing that this knows how to consume ABC and this knows how to consume XYZ. Um, so how do we, you know, what... Why are we, why are we we're fixated on those kind of integration tests? And people are often... That's the first thing you think about. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That is a perfectly good example of an integration test, in my view, as in A can talk to B. Um, but again, it's down to context. So if this was a unit level, we could argue that that would be a good integration test. If A spurts out ABC, B, you write something to check that B can consume ABC, and you, you do an assertion on the output. If this was an API, you'd say that we've written a listener over here, and if that listener receives X, Y, Z from from the API, then we're able to digest it and consume it. And there's nothing wrong with that, but obviously James knows this. Right? James, James is aware of these kind of things that people talk about. So I was trying to wonder, what is he getting at? Which has made me think back to when I said at the start, there's a relationship here. Yes, it might be a connection, but there's more than that. There's a relationship going on. So it started getting me thinking, what about what happens further on? So we can, we, can, we can test and we can write automated checks to make sure that these two can communicate. That's that easy. We, we, all, we all know how to do that. Um, but what about the what about further afield? If these two have a relationship, what can I cause to happen on B that might have an impact across the rest of B? So what happens over here? What happens further afield? What else is B integrated with? And the same for A. What happens over here? Could there be some kind of knock-on effect? Um, that the wider 
that this integration may cause that we may need to explore, um, just to see what potential issues may actually happen over here. Here we can check data doesn't get in any way uh, in misshapen straight in, in could possibly be mis um, uh, misinterpreted or miscommunicated. We can check that we handle that, but something still could happen. What if the rider system over here is really slowing B down? That means that this communication might have issues. So then we've got things like speed. So what if B was slowing down? What's the impact on A there? But not just A. What's what would happen to the rest of this system if A starts slowing down? So you could you could think about this relationship as being how do we test the speed impact? So I don't have an answer, um, but my current thoughts are just more beyond here. Like this is a connection, this is a direct one-to-one. -one. But what's the knock-on effect of that? What type of test could we design that may mean that what, whatever happens here, how does that impact the rest of the systems? Or whatever's happening here, how does that impact A and B and what could they possibly be doing? So don't really have a huge answer, um, but if you've got a view on integration testing, uh, then please share it. Um, go and read James's blog. Uh, there's some masses of comments on there now that you can read through and reply and add your own comment. Uh, James replies to you. Hopefully James will reply to this video if it's only if it's triggered in many ideas. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching and, and sharing my videos. Uh, thank you.